Hi, welcome to my channel. Mr. Milo and I are really happy to show you this week's piece. I bought this mid-century modern buffet in Facebook Marketplace for $40. The owner said that the style was Sonic. I had never heard about that style. If you know anything about it, leave a comment below. This makeover is part of the New Year's challenge, Diamonds Glitter and Shine, where wonderful YouTubers will be creating magic with their pieces. This challenge is hosted by Meg over at Lovely Jubbly Furniture. I'll leave a link to the playlist as well as to her channel in the description below. While saying that the piece is filthy is an understatement. Nothing works well and every surface is covered in grime and stains. I started by cleaning everything. I'll vacuum and clean every spot. Those hinges were not original, and it was very difficult to remove them. Nails and more nails. I didn't have the keys for the locks and for my design they should be discarded. The person that added these hinges nailed them even using two nails per hole. I'll use modern concealed hinges for this piece. Nails and more nails. I'll remove these bottom panels. Milo? He needs to be inspecting everything. The legs are loose and attached with nails. I hate nails. I did not film it, but after vacuuming I cleaned everything with soapy water. I will not use the hardware, it is hideous. I simply loathe it. I have to remove the bottom panels of the drawers. I will reuse them because they are just dirty. This panel has a minor crack, but I'll fix it with wood filler. Now time to disassemble the body. I'll take everything apart and clean and sand everything. There was a nail here that I hadn't seen because of the grime, and I broke a little bit of the panel. I should call this piece Nail Nightmare. I could finally release the top. I'll glue and clamp the bit I broke. And 
I'll also glue and clamp the top. Now it is time to finish disassembling the base. The legs need an extra support, so I'll be adding this wood plank to make the base more robust. The legs had so many nails. Nails and nails and more nails. I'm gonna cut the plank at an angle. Good fit. I'll attach the plank using pocket holes. Now I started sanding for hours. Here you can see the floor wax on the legs. Maybe years of polishing wood floors with red wax. I'll cover the holes the legs had with this light wood filler because I wanted to stain the top and the legs with a whitewash. I eventually could not do it. You'll see why later. I sanded everything starting with 60 grit sandpaper going up to 240. I reinforced the sliders with screws. The left side panel had separated completely and was a little warped, so I decided to join the two parts with glue and pocket screws. After filling the pocket holes with wood filler, I started to mix some bondo to repair some of the more damaged parts. I had to mix little bits and be quick, because the day was really hot. I'm not complaining, I love hot weather. Then I started sanding everything. I want a total refresh for this piece. I used some wood filler on the front of the drawers to conceal some dents. For the top I used the same progression, 60 grit to get rid of the dirt, 120 to sand slowly. 180 grit to smooth the surface and 240 to make it velvety smooth. Here I am preparing my wash. I'm gonna use a clear beige paint and water 
in a 30-70% ratio. The idea is to apply the wash as a stain and then wipe it away with a lint-free cloth. In this case, I'm using an old t-shirt. To cover some imperfections and some dings, I used some sawdust and glue as a custom-made putty. Then I started refreshing the bottoms of the drawers, the back panel, and the doors. I put some more wood filler to make everything ultra smooth. I then sanded the sides of the piece. Finally, when I was sanding the top for the last time, I realized that the whitewash would not get rid of all the stains of the wood. The top was really ugly, and it had ugly stains. Here I am preparing the base for the body, and you are going to witness a tiny accident. Ouch! Here you see my thumb with a band-aid. Instead of nails, I used screws. Lots of them. I will replace the old slats that supported the meal section. I sanded with a wood file some of the bando I used to reveal the section of the side panel. And it is time to start reassembling. I added a pocket screw under the top for extra strength. I'll add extra support for the side panels. I'll cut this piece of plywood and drill pocket holes. I'll hand sand the corners of the doors. Then I'll drill the holes for the hinges. As there are gaps between the top and the side panels, I'll caulk them with this transparent silicone. With this plywood, 
I'll replace the bottom part of the side cabinet. Yes, this time I'll use nails and glue. Here's the top. There you can see a burn mark and the state of the wood. I'll cover everything with a dark stain. I had run out of gloves so I tried using a plastic bag. It was not very useful in the end. I reinforced the interior panels from below and added felt pads to the legs. I painted the bottom of the drawers with this clear beige paint. And I painted the back panel in chalkboard black latex. I sprayed some water to make my brush run more smoothly. I had some navy blue chalk paint that was not very dark, so I mixed it with black to make it more dramatic. And I loved the color, rich dark blue, it makes me think of deep sea. I'll tape the borders to have crisp lines between my paint and my stain. Oh my god, painting is so therapeutical, and I love the dark blue against the dark stain. Timeless, elegant, but playful at the same time. I have this satin poly spray can, and I thought of using it to seal the bottom of the drawers. Now for the fun part. This challenge encouraged the use of stencils, gold, glitter, etc. So I decided to reuse this tribal batik stencil, but I will add a touch of gold to it. Stick around and you'll see how I did it.
I added a second coat of paint to everything and then I replaced the bottoms of the drawers. Now top coat. I love applying top coat. Of course, I am using Verithane's water-based poly in satin finish, which is my favorite. I love the rough sensation of the first coat of top coat over chalk paint, and then how smooth it becomes. If painting is a therapy, using top coat is pure pleasure. Here, I am adding a golden frame. As you see, the stencil is not perfect, but it doesn't matter. Imperfection makes unique pieces. Now, time to drill holes for the hardware of the doors. Here, you see me spraying gold paint to the hardware. I want them to be cohesive with the gold of the doors. Come here, Milo. He needs to be inspecting everything I do. Now I'll attach the back panels. Yes, I'm using nails. I hate them, but... They're necessary sometimes. Milo, let me work. Oops. Now time to attach the hardware. Do you remember that dirty old piece? Well, here it is now. the deep sea blue against the dark stain. The busy and feminine pattern of the doors give way to the soft, relaxing and masculine lines of the drawers. This piece will be the focal point of any room where it is placed. Don't forget to check the playlist with all the other wonderful videos by the most amazing furniture flippers of YouTube. And thanks Meg for hosting such a beautiful challenge. If you like this flip, you can check this other video on the right.